Hello, so I'm Paul. I'm, um, I'm a technical architect and I'm a real-life civil servant. I'm, I work in the Cabinet Office in a, a group called the Government Digital Service. Um, when, when I was invited to talk, which is you know, an amazing privilege, um, I immediately felt very much a sort of uh, an imposter um, because we don't really sort of think about performance or the lot. Well, we think when we, when we use the word performance, we think about correctness. Don't necessarily think about speed. But then, as I thought about it a bit more deeply, it turns out to just be something in our DNA, it's something we do all the time. Uh, so, let me just give you a bit of background about why we're here and how it came about. And then I'll set that into the context of a few anecdotes around how we're just making things faster all the time. And um, <clears throat> about three years ago, um, Martha Lane Fox, with some help from some friends who've been working for a long time in my society and out in the fringes and inside government, wrote a letter to Francis Maud saying there's got to be a revolution, not an evolution, in the way that government does IT. Well, IT is a bit of a you know, bad word, so we use the word digital. Um, but basically, that letter set out um, a strategy for how we're working now. And that's the first thing was to, to create our organisation. I don't think she used the word government digital service. She used, said, you know, create a bunch of geeks in government who know what they're doing and put them in power, put them in charge, and that's us. Then you go away and fix publishing. Now, government has lots and lots of websites, and the only thing they have in common is that they're all different. And so the idea was to build a single place where you can go to, so you didn't have to understand government to actually get things done. Then to go out and then fix transactions, and that's hard. That's where things are happening in the field. You know, they're, they're, that's your lorry loads of paper going to uh, DVLA in Swansea. You know, people applying for passports, driving licenses, all the usual things. Fix those, that's much harder. Then finally, you know, you can build a beautiful retail experience for government, but it's much cooler if other people can, you know, put things together. You know, so that's in our, in our language, build APIs. Um, Hello. So at the time, she talked a lot about DirectGov. And DirectGov was um, a site which was launched with, the, um, with Sug singing It Must Be Gov. And it had a lot of sort of marketing and publicity. But I don't think it had a lot of brand recognition. Similarly, um, Business Link was a place to go to find out about its business information. Um, I struggled to use it. Uh, I don't think I saw anybody use it really well. Um, so what we did is we got a small team. Um, probably about 20 people, and they built an alpha. And this is AlphaGov, and that was used to have a conversation with government, say, this is what the vision could be like. Um, that led to a beta, which ran for a while. Um, I like the icons very much. Um, and over the course of a number of months, this became more and more real, until on October 17th last year, we launched GovUK. We launched it by switching the other sites off. That's basically how we work. Um, this is GovUK today. Um, so basically, we just work as you might expect. Um, somebody joked, actually, if, if, uh, if real architects worked like software architects, they'd be building another long London on, alongside the existing London and then switch the old London off. Um, it turns out that's probably what actually what was happening if you go to Canary Wharf. But um, <laughs> it's just, just how we work. So, and then we kind of observed how that worked well and what things we found important, and we wrote down some design principles. And those, these were written a couple of years ago almost now. And I still stand by them. I think it's probably the most important thing we've done. And the, the one that we all really believe in um, is, you know, we're in government not to make government better, but to make your lives better, to make our lives better, to actually increase the value of, you know, UK PLC through making services, making it easier to transact with government. And so we start with the needs, your needs, not, not the government's, not the organisation's needs. And that's our mantra. So to give you an example of that, this is direct govs. It feels bad bailing on an old website, but you know, it's good fun as well. So here, here's, here's direct gov. Um, it has a sort of, uh, this is how you would find out where the next bank holiday is. Uh, this is gov UK. It tells you where the next bank holiday is. Um, here's, you know, some of, these, some of these web pages are more important than others. And it's funny to say it's my favorite web page, but um, <laughs> it's, it's really important, and, and it's why we're here, because you can totally empathise with somebody reading that page. You may have to read it at some point in your life, and the one thing is you don't want is a page that's going to make you cry even more. Um, so there's also things, you can apply for a passport, um, you can apply for a passport for your horse, um, 
you know, really, we're just trying to do less. We're trying to do the things that government is just here for. So there are, were hundreds of pages, thousands of pages on direct gov, which were useless um, or were done better elsewhere. There was one about how to recognise waves. There was one about bullfrogs. This one's your government's advice on having a green egg barbecue. It says, pull on a pullover. Thank you. Um, so we got rid of those pages, and any HTTP geeks will be really pleased that I managed to make this a 410 page. Uh, but it's really an important page because it's basically a fork in the road. It says, well, if you really want the information that was here, go to the National Archives, and all that information is on the National Archives. If you want to find out what's going on really with your government, go to GovUK. And this was borne out by, um, by analytics. So this is really the thrust of what I'm going to say is measure things. So GovUK has a very far fewer pages, but it turns out the more people are visiting the, the site and more people are actually getting what they need from the site. Um, and so similarly, the next thing was to go to the department websites, having dealt with the, you know, the information that government publishes um, you know, for, for users' needs. Uh, this is more about kind of government, what government policy is, speeches made by, you know, um, by ministers, um, news information, uh, what the Prime Minister is doing today, and so forth. And it was fed across a number of sites. These are the, these, all these pages are to do with uh, government's policy in Afghanistan. Well, on GovUK, we've got one page, and it's on one URL, and if you look at it, it's, it's tagged by the various departments who've contributed to that. And that information architecture is quite, as you imagine, tra quite transformative in the way government works. We won a design award. We won design of the year against the Heatherwick uh, Cauldron and, um, and the Shard, which surprised all of us, but, you know, uh, including the Daily Mail, uh, who sort of decided that, you know, the world's most boring website uh, won a design award. But it's, it's how, how we came about that, which is important. And it's just driven by uh, something that is like part of what we do. We don't build anything without um, not doing user testing, because we're not testing users, but actually researching what people want. And... To give you an example, you know, the fastest way to build a web page is have people not ever visit it. So when people want to know what the bank holiday is, they could go to that web page, but they could also Google it and it'll pop up in their results. Um, I mentioned the icons earlier. Uh, I love the icon icons. When I joined, I said, I confidently predict these will be on tea towels and, uh, and coffee mats in, in gift shops. It turned out I was wrong because we deleted them because it was just affectation. It was just you know, information that people didn't need. Um, so, um, one part of that, one affectation we have stood by is our font. It's transport. It's tested by people uh, driving at 70 mile an hour in the rain. It's pretty good. It's a British thing. So, we built a, a web font for this, and um, it turned out that wasn't so great in the beta. You know, different people, on, even on the same browser, on different machines, got different experiences, and they told us, they told, they told us it sucked. Um, so we went out, and um, so the way we dealt with that, you know, um, was to sort of try and work out what about it was, was not good. And so we, we did lots of user testing, we tested users with the site, we, you know, as I've just said, we don't do that, but we do. Um, and we sort of basically came up with a number of reasons, but actually the one that was kind of most prominent was the speed. So the way we dealt with that was uh, form a small team who worked on that in a spike fashion, as you'd expect in an agile team. And the output, well, you can see it on GitHub, you can see it on the site, but we had to host the fonts ourselves. I think most people would just punt that to Typekit or, or whoever to deal with that. Uh, we had to deal with it ourselves, but it was a small team who kind of went out and spoke to people like Jake Archibald was mentioned earlier. You know, he came in and helped us. We brought in professional help to hint the font well, and we just halved the font down. And the result is, you know, lots of pages which, um, you know, this is Sinatra, I think, uh, sorry, sorry, Sinhali, uh, the, um, the Sri Lankan language, and um, oh, there's, there's pages in Arabic. Actually, um, right to left is very interesting in Markdown, which is what our text is written in. Um, but anyway, that's another story. So the thing we have to do sort of is make, um, do the hard work to make things simple. And um, so there's um, a sort of story about how we switched the, the old websites off, which is you know could occupy a whole presentation and has done in fact. So. Um, we, in sort of uh, January, you know, before we launched, we had two main websites, Direct Government's Link, lots of people visiting it, nobody going to the beta. You know, people didn't really care about the beta beyond people we tested with and we showed it to. We stuck a machine in front of the old websites and we used that to generate real live traffic. And that's how we sort of were assured that when we launched the site, when we actually changed the DNS or migrated um, uh, some of those sites in, in through uh, CDNs, 
that the traffic would work on the real site. And we also did lots of you know, soak testing, all the kind of things you would expect to do. Um, one of the things that came out of that is we actually really loved Nginx, which is a bit peculiar for somebody from the British government to say that we like a Russian web server. But um, <laughs> you know, James Bond was wrong, it turns out. So um, one of the things we did was we actually followed the manual. Now, that's the last act of a desperate man is to read the, read the manual. But um, the manual sort of said, you know, do this with redirection. And we then loaded 100,000 of our redirects into the into Nginx server. Uh, we got eight a second, which you know, we could work around that, but it wasn't great. Um, so then we sort of thought, okay, well, we'll use a different way. We'll create a location. You know, it's just this bit bonkers, but we'll do this. And we got you know, 400 a second out of a single Nginx server on a small box, which is great, except it took 35 minutes to reboot the server. Um, so we had a little bit of a head scratch, and then somebody said, oh, why don't we just sort them? So one units command, best units command ever, it turns out. Um, and we can restart the server in eight seconds. And we've, we've improved it since by talking to Nginx and looking at the code, which is great. And the morning of launch, you know, uh, this was, this, these photographs were taken within the space of an hour. Uh, when we launched, we did the cha DNS change overnight, and then we had literally an hour as people woke up and hit the site. Uh, went up to about a million users that day. Um, and, you know, we didn't appear in the Daily Mail apart from being called boring, which is great. So the old school way of dealing with this is to um, do lots of you know, hard sort of core operations research. And it's something I was taught at university in knapsack problem simplex method. All these things I had to think about, mathematical proof. Don't do that anymore. We just try things out. So we build like an architecture, which is very common. You know, um, we use a CDN. You know, that's an obvious thing to do. Uh, we have layering. We use Nginx to do the SSL termination. Then we use Varnish, and we build routers. Uh, so it turns out that GubUK, that's a single domain, is actually lots of applications which do one job really well, and we can load balance and build teams around those. And that's, you know, sounds fairly obvious. Um, but again, we were fortunate enough to work in the open, and, uh, we're and that, that means we're changing our role with suppliers because uh, with lots of systems, it's really hard to, um, to scale um, a, you know, somebody's got a proprietary database if you have to speak to somebody about procurement, about getting more licenses. Um, so really one of the problems you've got with performance is when you do have a problem, you don't have any time to think. And the way to deal with that, of course, is, as you all know, is build things you measure. And where things have gone wrong is when we've missed, missed a blinking light to say, this thing's taking a second instead of a few milliseconds. So just instrument everything, graph all the things. Um, designing with data is something we just encourage all the time. All of our developers have access to Google Analytics or whatever analytics tool you're using at the time, um, and then use that to tell stories. Uh, this was built by Ed Sowden, who's um, one of our sort of uh, front-end developers. And he said, we're building for browsers, but actually people use multiple browsers. And this was proved by, over Christmas, all sorts of civil servants who were forced to use Internet Explorer on their, their mad laptop uh, went home and they were using their iPhones and their, and their Android devices at, at home over Christmas. Um, and um, Pete Hurley uh, built an experiment on GubUK to actually, there's a blog post about this if you're interested which kind of proved that um, a significant portion of our, of our users don't get JavaScript for all sorts of valid reasons. Um, so those, those dashboards, there's a maturity model in, in software, which is you start with something like a hack, a spike, a project, and it builds to a product, and then when that product's useful, you can make it into a platform. So we're turning what we've learned with our analytics into um, uh, you know, online performance platforms. This is a dashboard for licensing application, has information about response time, but mostly about how, um, how things are working. And so this is a story about shaping teams. And one of the things we're doing now is we're franchising ourselves. We're going out to 25 uh, transactions across government. And we're trying to teach them to uh, behave like we do. And the way we've done that is to codify this um, in, a, in a service manual. So again, if you look for our service manual, it's on GovUK. All, all the kind of advice I've given you is, is explaining more detail uh, from choosing technology to um, dealing with uh, performance problems. And um, that's in two parts. There's a carrot, which is like a, a informational advice, and there's a stick. We have t uh, a standard, which is 26 points, which every government service from 2014 will have to comply with. It starts with thinking about news needs, ends with demonstrate that your, your service using your minister. That's my talk. Thank you.